Do you like Huey Lewis in the news, Miguel? Sure do, man. Because if you do, you're in the right place. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Let's Talk Movies. I'm Brad. And I'm Miguel. And this is our full commentary of Steel Magnolias. Steel Magnolias? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> A very different movie. Uh, this is our full commentary of American Psycho from 2000, starring Christian Bale, Justin Thoreau, Josh Lucas, uh, the one and only gift to cinema, Jared Leto, uh, Willem Dafoe, Reese Witherspoon, and so many others. This was released, uh, when was this released? April 4, uh, no, 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 no. Yes, April 14th, 2000. I, I was mixing up my dates here. It premiered at the Sundance Film Festival in January of 2000. That's what I was looking at. Uh, this is a This is a weird one, man. And it's kind of funny that we're, I think it's pretty funny that we're going from an American werewolf in London, which by the way, we just did that with Frank Riker and Darren Sands of the Slaughtered Lamb movie podcast. Uh, that episode of Purely and Simply Evil, plus the commentary is out now. So go check that out. Uh, it's funny because we're we're taking a deep dive into the Elm Street series, but we kind of took a break from Elm Street. And we, we had Frank and Darren on. We talked an American werewolf in London. But it's kind of funny that we're moving to American Psycho because it's another horror comedy film, which is... I, I we didn't intend for it to be two horror comedies kind of back to back, but even though you know, uh, Miguel, tell me your thoughts on this. Even though you could include them both in the the genre of horror comedy, they're both two very very different distinct films too. You know, yeah, but I would say that like I don't know, I would say like American Psycho. If you had to put it in a box or label it, it's probably like a psychological thriller comedy or something like that yeah yeah well wikipedia actually i believe wikipedia listed as a satirical horror comedy so like it, and it is dead I mean, on the spot right there if i do say I so think, myself i think american psycho definitely has a little bit more it, it's more of a think piece i think uh especially with the fact that it is based on a novel written by brett ellis of the same name um, and the novel is actually, I mean, it's on the banned book list. It's banned in some countries. I know in the UK, in Australia, in Ireland, a few different places, it's sold in shrink wrap. So if you go to buy it, you won't just see it sitting on a shelf. It's actually in shrink wrap with a label that says American Psycho, you know? So it's just, it's pretty, it's pretty hardcore. And they actually cut. Why? What? Like, if you touch it, what, you become it? Like, what the fuck was that? Like, <laughs> you become not... Patrick Bateman. Hey, Paul! Uh, but you, like... It, I don't know. It, it's very interesting. And the more and more, hi, Milo. The more and more I, I like, looked into it as, you know, I started preparing for commentary and for purely and simply evil, um, I, it, I was kind of shocked that the book is way more hardcore and way more extreme than even the movie is. Because the movie's got some pretty, the movie's got some pretty hardcore moments in it, you know? It definitely um, has, yeah. It's bro. But, this thing is a. This thing is basically like an hour and a half of like a general case study, of like it really human, like psyche. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when the novel came out, I think it came out in nineteen ninety one, ninety two, early ninety sometime. Um, but you know, the novel is very much a play on social norms and capitalism, consumerism, um, women and violence. I mean, there's like it's a lot of really controversial taboo things and miguel and i were just talking a minute ago before uh you know before we came on and he was like this would this movie wouldn't have probably wouldn't fly today you know no dog it wouldn't fly so far no this movie <laughs> would have got canceled at pre-production it, 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 and it's funny you say that because it even had a really hard time nobody wanted to touch it even mm -hmm. in you know at production on this thing began in 1992 and it went through, you know, we'll, we'll dive into this more on Purely and Simply Evil too. but it went through a ton of different people before they landed, ironically, on a woman director and Mary Heron. Uh, it, it was written by two women. I mean, the two people that adapted it were two women. And I think that's kind of funny given like it's so like violence towards women is such a prominent theme throughout this. You know, it, it's just, it's an interesting movie. So. Oh, and, and it's very important to note, we are watching the extended version or the uncut version or the unrated version. I know it says it differently. Um, on HBO Max, it says American Psycho extended version. So if you're watching the adult version, it's so not for extended much. version, dude. It's like a minute and a half. I know. Like, it, it longer, adds, like, like max two and a half. Minutes. I know. But I think it's, it's, a little more, 
it's a little bit more of the threesome scene. It's a little bit more of uh, the the carnage. So we, we get a little bit more Patrick Bateman doing his thing, doing multiple things. Mm-hmm. Yep. All not good things. I know, right? So if you've never done a commentary with us before, uh, we are going to say three, two, one, play. And when we say play, you will obviously click play. Uh, pretty straightforward. Go ahead, get your copy ready. You can pause us again. We are paused at zero minutes and zero seconds. We are watching on HBO Max. So, Miguel, are you ready for this buku crazy butt train to go? I am ready. Choo -choo. Crazy. Choo <laughs> choo choo, Paul. Uh, here we go. And we are starting the American Psycho Extended Version in three, two, one, play. Stars, it's beautiful. It's a horse. It's Why? a lion. You... <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. Damn it. It's, a, it's a horse. <laughs> I sucked it. Yeah, I think it's a horse. Gosh. Like what? I'll be honest, it's definitely been a while since I've seen this movie, so this will definitely be a real hoot. Well, it's funny. I actually, I tried to show this to Julia last year, because she, you know, she likes, she she's a reader, and she, you know, she enjoys novelizations of things, and she enjoys, you know, like, movie adaptations and stuff, and I was like, she'll appreciate this. This isn't a novel adaptation. Bro, she walked out. At the point where <laughs> Christian Bale is screwing the, he's having the threesome. She was like, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen that she left. <laughs> You're probably like, no, no, come back. It gets better. It does not get better after that. Oh, what the fuck even was that? I'll tell you what, this thing has a stacked cast, too. That's part of what makes it so good. Willem Dafoe, Christian Bale, Jared that Leto. Does look good. I, I know people shit on Jared Leto, but Jared Leto is not bad in this. He's had a couple good milestones, but other than that, I mean, he's, I guess you could say subpar actor. That's yeah. the best way I describe him. Uh huh. Better singer than actor. Fair. And I guess you could say this is just like to set the tone for like the environment right. oh. you're going to be in, which is like oh. high class, like Rudy Snooty kind of uh, yeah. society, like, you know, pinky up when you drink your fucking tea. <laughs> They're all rich as hell. Yeah. It's like, funny. Bro, I didn't realize this, but Samantha Mathis, um, who plays, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, shit. What's her name? Uh, Courtney. Courtney. Samantha Mathis actually plays uh, Frank Castle's wife in uh, Tom Jane's Punisher movie. Oh, that's rad. That sounds awesome, by the way. Bro, you got me fucked up having to read you the, the fucking menu. Uh, <laughs> read the fucking thing and then tell me what you want. There's asshole from the Hulk. Right? Still an asshole here. Fuck yeah, this movie would not last. I know, right? And they're like they're banking executives, so you know, like they don't want for anything. Like, oh, well, good for you. At least he has morals. I know, right? What marker are you at, Miguel? I am at 326. I will be at 342, 1, 340. Good deal. That's the way you do it if you're rich, right? Rich ass uh bougie restaurant in the day and then uh like weird nightclub by night. But still wearing your five piece uh suit from Tom. <laughs> right? Yeah. Not docking Tom Ford. 
He's a great director. Yeah, Lee. Twenty five dollars for two drinks. Damn. Jesus. Oh shit. It's interesting he's in the mirror too. Well, I even read like something that you know, the author, Brett Ellis, was not he was not about making this into a movie. He was like, What the hell? Like, how are you gonna translate this? Because he had even he had said like even him as the author, he didn't know what was actually happening versus what Patrick Bateman was just imagining in his own crazy ass head. And then what he was just a blatant lie, like to himself. Mm -hmm. So he was like, how do you get that to translate to like for an audience member to know what's real and what's not, but honestly it, it works better that way, you know? Yeah. To like, keep guessing. Bro, that's fucking scary. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> and it actually makes me feel bad about myself. I think there was like a thousand fucking stomach crunches. Golly, Bro. dude. I mean, look at him. You can wash your clothes on those abs. Holy shit. <laughs> but... I think Margot Robbie did like some video like replicating this scene. Not the shower scene, just the entire like getting ready <laughs> scene, you fucks. I use a water activated skin scrub. Good God, bro. Bro, there's literally a thousand dollars or so in that cabinet. Oh, yeah. Easily. Well, when you got his kind of money. Also, I read last night they did this thing in like one take. This whole like facial mask scene and stuff. I would want this done first, too. Like in one <laughs> take. I'd be annoyed as fuck. Rip to the World Trade Center, man. Bro, you would be dogged on nowadays if you come into the into the workplace wearing those. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. That used to be high class, like one percenters wear those. It's like the most late nineties, early two thousands thing you I've ever seen though. Yeah. You know, I, I couldn't imagine anybody but Christian Bale doing this. Like, he was perfect. And, a re you know, they really wanted... The studio really, really, really tried to not get him cast in this. They wanted Leonardo DiCaprio. And he was actually attached for a long time. But... Christian Bale was so sure that he would drop out mm -hmm. that he kept working and like working out and prepping for this for like nine months. And eventually mm -hmm. Leo dropped. And then even after Leo dropped, the studio was like, we don't want him. They offered it to Ben Affleck, Edward Norton, Vince Vaughn, Ewan McGregor, like all kinds of people. And they all backed out and it ended up being perfect with Christian Bale. <laughs> that eye roll. <laughs> Again with the women that was thing too. Such objectifying conversation I've ever heard. Oh yeah. I don't think in this movie there was one minute of like a business transaction. 
No. No, not at all, right? At least I didn't think so at the time, from what I remember watching this movie. Oh my god, is that Drew Barrymore? No, it's uh, Reese Witherspoon. Oh my god. My supposed fiance? How do you how's it supposed? I don't know. I think I remember thinking in my head like this guy had like a split personality that just relived fantasies. Yeah. You know, he's got to return some videotapes. <laughs> I got to return some videotapes. <laughs> it's so like, it's so surface level bullshit too, you know, like the yeah. stuff that they care about. Yeah. The menus in Braille. What? Whatever. Three shrimps. That's fucking hilarious. I know, right? And it probably costs like $46. (laughs) You know, he's almost... Would you say he's OCD? Yeah. With how, like, like he knows everything about everybody. He has such a vigorous routine, a vigorous workout routine, you know, and all this stuff. Like, it's just, it's kind of funny. Burp. I would agree. Like, I, if you want, you could probably play a game in regards of, like, how many uh, disorders or mental uh, oh, yeah. jobs he has. Yeah. Even though you're a serial killer and you're a dick to women. Bro, I'm pretty sure Julia was probably like, Patrick Bagman seems okay. No. It's just funny because it's like everything he just said is completely, he's like the opposite of that. He's like, that was like Which? the biggest, that was the most hypocritical um, right? Um, monologue I've ever heard. Yeah, which here's the thing, though. It's interesting because, you know, even if you go back to the novel and the way the novel's written, like the his dialogue and his narration is almost kind of the same thing, which they didn't have social media in 2000 or in 91 when this was written. But, you know, like with social media, uh, you know, people only put their best foot forward. You know what I mean? You only see what people want you to see it's almost like the narration is just what he wants you to see his outer self you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it's kind it kind of goes back to like the split personality the weird he only sees what he wants you to see type deal it's it's interesting yeah you could literally do a character study on patrick baven yeah i would agree i'm pretty sure plenty of people have done that and if they're you know i guess theater you see how like he quickie switches? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> So did she just he just kill that broad that he just met on the street? Uh, it kind of implies that, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. With the blood.
<laughs> I love how he gave like a slight sliver I know, of right? right there. <laughs> He's watching lesbo porn on the TV. So these are the videotapes that he was... Oh, God, dude. This whole entire movie is like a blur to me now. Yeah. Dorcia. Was that a phone book? It was. It was. Holy shit. The disrespect. I know, right? Any particular reason why his face is blurred out and she's... Well, I, I think it goes back to the weird personality thing. You don't know what's... I don't know. You don't know what's real. You don't know what's fake. You, It's like his dual-sided personality type deal. Mm-hmm. You know? You're the one that invited her, and yet you seem almost disgusted to be here with her. Yeah. Porky. <laughs> it's definitely not. I love how he just straight up told her what she was going to order. And he's drugged her up so that she doesn't know that, you know. I mean, yeah, sure, I guess. Oh, look, it's Morbius. (laughs) <laughs> it's Morbin time. <laughs> Fuck. Bro, the amount of like, what's the word I'm thinking of? Like, It's like the most pretentious thoughts I can ever think of. Superficial is a word I'm looking for. Yeah. Here we go. The infamous card scene. Is that a gram? They're going to do coke over here? Which car do you do you like? Tell me. They both look pretty much the freaking same. can't believe look how like disgusted he is I know. Like, well dude, these people they're tossing the around down. they're tossing around their business cards like they're anti-cars yeah 
Well, I mean, when you, when your entire identity is like your profession in this uh, giant yeah, like, student business world, I mean, yeah, yeah. Again, everything is so superficial. Like down to like the way you walk is like is pretty yep. much uh, judged by either clients and your colleagues. It's like what we talked about with Bateman. It, it's all your identity, you know. Mm-hmm. I've never thought of a card as thick. I read that he figured out how to control his sweat glands for this scene. Oh, God, Patrick. I mean, fucking Christian Bale. I know, right? Dude, I'm really excited to see what he brings to Gore. I'm not going to lie. I hope it's not like, um, what's it called? I hope it's not um, restrained or um, toned down so he yeah, can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he's allowed to just do what he does, like, Christian Bale is about as good as it gets. Yeah. And, you know, he stayed, like, he stayed in character during this the entire time. He spoke in an American accent the entire time on set. It, it, it was interesting, you know? I know him. That was that was it. Now he's got to kill him. He kills a dog, too. Jesus fucking... Ugh. It's never okay with the dog, man. We draw the line at dog. Why is it Why is it every single fucking movie you make me watch that's horror-based, I there's always a I dog that fucking dies? I really don't intend to do that. Mm-hmm. Ooh. It's that mint skin mask he wears every morning. After he uses his 15 friggin' shampoos. That's interesting. Pubes. That was something I really didn't want to point out. Ed. <laughs> Thanks, man. It's like he he acknowledged the fact that he has zero to little to little to no uh, emotions. Yes. Nothing other than greed and disgust, which is yes, like yes. such like a insane, like the worst two uh, emotions you could possibly have yeah. right now. Well, you know, I, he's very superficial. Like, he's OCD and he's particular about things, but nothing really matters to him. It's like he goes through the motions of life. He he doesn't, like he just said, he doesn't feel emotion. He gets what he wants, when he wants, where he wants it, because he's up, he's at the top of that capitalistic food chain. Like, he, and I mean, he's got money, he's good looking, He but underneath all, it's like what we said about the social media, like the, not fake, but the, the hiding behind like the perfect version of yourself, mm -hmm. you know, like underneath of all of that good looking rich dude is a psychopath, you know, and yeah. a complete douche.
He still thinks he's not uh he's still yeah. Marcus and not Patrick. Yep. What? <laughs> How do you remove that, my man? I've never heard of that meal, but okay. Is it? I don't know. It's so awkward. Yeah. So he's already like drunk as fuck. Yeah. Well, and the interesting thing between him and Paul is like, is he, is the stuff he's saying, is he really saying it? Is he just saying it in his head and he's narrating to the audience? Like it, mm -hmm. it's, it's an interesting kind of play on things. <laughs> he's so like, he got like all the information of how he how he actually yeah. feels about Patrick Bateman. Here we go. You notice how jumpy it is? Like yeah. it's I think that's one of the things the director was like going for is like just to make it like so sporadic that you can't really tell whether or not it's like real or not. Yeah. <laughs> I believe I read last night he was hitting plexiglass. And there were crew members laying on the ground, just squirt, like squirting blood up at him, you know? That is sketch. Imagine that cameraman. Also, this was improvised. <laughs> the moonwalk. He's so drunk. Hip to be square. <laughs> Jesus fuck. It's so hardcore. <laughs> Man. I give you Christian Bale, my friends. Yep. I think this was a moment where he like absolutely solidified himself as oh, yeah. an actor to be watched. Well, I think that's why that's why they wanted Leo DiCaprio and Ewan McGregor, 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 and so many other people because Christian Bale wasn't. Uh, I'm, I could be proven correct, but, um, or incorrect, excuse me, but I, I think he wasn't as well known of an American actor yet. He was just well known in in England, so I think this definitely helped put him on the map in terms of like, you know, I don't know. That's not sketchy at all. Oh, nobody, no, not at all. Minus the would, entire trail of fucking blood. Nobody would think twice about that.
See, it's that shit kind of pissed. That, that. They're so superficial. Yeah. Minus the blood dripping from the fucking bag. Where yeah. did you get that army bag? Right. Uh, doesn't look like it. Yeah, it really doesn't look like it. You know, back when like fingerprints weren't, uh, you know, a real thing. Right. <laughs> that was Christian Bale acting as an American, but also acting as Marcus. Right. Well, acting as Paul. Yeah, Paul, my bad. Oh, yeah, still acting as Marcus, acting as Paul. Wow, well, that escalated quickly. I know, right? I mean, lunch starts at McDonald's at 10.30. Bro, you think Patrick Bateman eats at McDonald's? He obviously goes to a ratty-tatty Mexican restaurant. Again, it's like putting on a show, you know? Yep. Can you hear it? Peter Parker. <laughs> How old was Willem Dafoe right here? I don't know. Two, the year 2000, so. Holy shit. Uh, I just read a report. He's Tobey Maguire is, was, is the same age as Willem Dafoe in the first uh, Spider-Man. Wow. Yeah. That makes me kind of uncomfortable. A little bit, right? Paul and Arth, the fuck is that? <laughs> Forget the fucking bottle that was left on there, too. Yeah, right. Twenty fucking seven, dog. I know, right? Uh, he likes to sing. He likes to act. He's also a vampire. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because uh, uh, Willem Dafoe is a goblin. I know, right? And Patrick Bateman is a bat. Bro. They're all going to be a part of Marvel. Holy shit, that's true. Yeah. That's insane. Oh, Cincinnati. Right. Ooh, he's 
on your trail, bitch. Damn, that smile, though. I also read that they... Hey. You're back soon. Julia just came back. Um, I also read that they purposely told Willem Dafoe to act different in, like, multiple takes, and they pieced together, like, the different versions, you know? I'll be right back. All right. Like, yes, do more to incriminate yourself, my guy. Yep. Yeah, like, if I was a detective, I would automatically be like, okay, mark this guy as suspect number one. I don't know who the fuck Cl Cliff is, but. Hello, friends. I had to grab another beer. Hey, look, takes a chance on us. I know, right? <laughs> it's pretty sick. The, down the neighbor downstairs would be oh. aggravated as fuck. Oh, yeah. Julia just got home and I was like, yeah, we're watching your favorite movie. <laughs> she was like, ew. Yeah. I'm at a coon cycle. It's very, you know... It, Even thinking back to the uh, you when he was stuffing the body bag in the car and you were like, what the hell? When the guy's like, that's such a nice bag. And like, he doesn't realize it's so it's so interesting that. Like. Uh, like kind of how we said it's a think piece. It, it's it's satirical because it's so extreme. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like everything about it is just it, it's not even it's not enough to just like say it. It's like everything, the, the murders, the way he is, their personalities, and the business card thing, the, the superficialness of them. Like, it's just so, it, it's funny how, how extreme this movie is. Yeah. Good lord. Yes, I would just go along with that because you gave me like over He probably paid her know. buku bucks. Yeah. You Do you think he actually he changed? Yeah. Do you think he actually enjoys this, or is he just oh, again a face, hundred percent? Is this just going through the motions of being Paul and like? Yeah. Uh, it's like I don't know if he actually enjoys it on any level, you know.
So what, he bought like a low level hooker and then bought like a high class hooker? I, yeah, I guess. Strange. You said that. I don't well, he's trying to drive that home. Well, despite that, I'm going to keep the on bucket. Do you want to hear what I do? No. I don't care. Do you just... You just... Nope. You like Huey Lewis in the news? <laughs> Fucking hell, Phil Collins. We gotta get Phil Collins in there. You like Phil Collins? Well, let me ask you this. If, if he's surface, if he's so surface level that he doesn't really care about any of this, why do you think he goes to such lengths to to put on this whole elaborate show, you know? I think it's because, like, he doesn't consider himself <laughs> Patrick Bateman. Like, he considers himself as, as, like, he just plays the part of Patrick Bateman. Yeah, that's But fair. he also called himself Paul Allen, too, which I was confused with. Well, about. he's trying to pretend to be Paul Allen to, yeah. you know... She's like, what have I gotten myself into? Yeah. It's so weird. Again, even the music is a huge like juxtaposition of what's happening. You know? Yeah. And like he's so like it like he hates being himself, but he also like is so self centered with himself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like during this moment right here, he's more focused on himself than actually in like right anything else. Yeah. Like, what the hell is that? She's like, I'm only here to get paid. Yeah. 
At least he let them sleep. I know, right? <laughs> They're fucking asleep. I know, right? Oh boy. Zoinks. You know what? You just beat the shit out of them? I guess. I don't know if we, I don't know. We really don't know what happened there. Dude, I'll tell you what. Uh, <clears throat> Doc Lucas is a good actor, but good God, I hate it. Do you remember in Eric Bana's Hulk movie? He was yeah. like the, the, oh, he was such a douche. They're like, what the fuck did All you right. just say? It's amazing that the business... Co- oh, his is all different. Why is he... I don't know. I think he's kind of a goody two shoes who's trying to like, like he's trying to get in with them, you know? Yeah. I am like <laughs> so sickened <laughs> by the awkwardness of this. He washes the gloves. <laughs> I've got to return those videotapes. Oh, man. So funny. I will say that was one of the more comical moments of the film, too. It definitely was. Like just overtly comical. It's not. You don't have to really dig into it too much. It's just. It's just funny. His reaction to how that is. You know, there's a Broadway adaptation of this. I f- you, uh, would not want to watch it. Could you imagine? You wouldn't watch it. No. That's his only alibi now. I know, right?
It's like, where the fuck did that come from? I know, right? To each his own. It's so interesting. He shows zero emotion. And yeah, there, but you there could tell is. he was like, <laughs> he was so like fucking like distraught by that conversation oh, yeah. because yeah, yeah, his his uh, what's it called? His character that he usually plays like literally just diminished at the feet of like that detective. Exactly. Uh-oh. And he assumes it's about, you know, he assumes it's better looks. What was that like his her ultimatum? No. She's unhappy. I mean like he just he just wants her for sex. He he seems annoyed with her. She needs somebody to like talk to and nobody, you know. Mhm. Nobody gives her that. Honestly, it's probably really creative that it was directed by or written, excuse me, written by two women and directed by a woman because like, uh, you know, it's a lot of the stuff with women in this movie and this derogatory, negative, you know, over sexualized, you know, under one. It's not even really undertones. It's it's 100 percent like it was probably all the more well done. You know, and the satiricalness of it. And it you know, it, it the point comes across. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's very noticeable that it's like it's supposed to make you go, holy crap, man. Jesus Christ. Steroids. Why'd he put it on his teeth? Uh, it's... Fuck. Is that like... Is that it's a like, thing? Yeah, it's a usual... It's a, it's a normal trope that happens. It's like, you gotta rub it around your teeth and get it in your gums, because apparently it soaks up the drug a lot more. Not speaking from experience, but... <laughs> We've never done coke, just to let yeah. you all know. You noticed how it was very, uh, 
You notice how he said murder and execution? She was she thought it was like merger and acquisitions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you think the significance of that is like it's like his his mind is still is like starting to blend with like his actual real world? Well, yeah, I, I think that kind of goes back to the thing. I mean, you're exactly right about he even as an audience member, even Brett Ellis saying as the writer, you can't discern what's actually happening versus what's happening in his brain versus what he's lying about and what he just wants you to think or you know what i mean like what he's lying to himself about it, it it's it's pretty interesting i had actually mm-hmm. um you know i i i was going to read this on purely and simply evil but i'll read it here too um this was from jennifer kraus a, a quote from an analysis she did um and it's pretty profound she said on the one hand is a rich wall street banker bateman concerned and very self-conscious about every detail of his physical appearance expensive possessions and control of the people and the world around him but on the other hand is the inner self of patrick bateman the aboriginal self who copes and relinquishes his outer complications and fake identity created by consumerism through violence on other human beings who he finds consumable so the human beings that he's killing are just it's just it, that's the consumerism portion of this it's just like people are people are expendable to him you know it, it's just another thing to consume uh and it goes on and uh, expresses absolute con- uh absolute control of his desires and true self through his violent fantasies so mm-hmm. it, it's it's like the people around him are just expendable to him there it's just a it's just more money it's just something else to buy it's something else to have you know no but nothing yeah. really matters nothing really matters <laughs> dorcia don't dorcia and she's a nice person too that this, I think this woman right here is the one I, I'm truly like saddened by. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, because you know she's just trying to make it, and she's all right. She was so excited. I know, right? God, please. (laughs) It's in your freezer. Do you think she genuinely likes him, or is she just doing this to try to, like, move her way up? I think she seems genuine, you know? Yeah. Go ahead and pick your pick your weapon of choice, my guy. All right. Choose your weapon. Finish him. Why is it with a lot of these like nice penthouse places? Everything is like in chrome or in white or in like a sand or like a, a, a I, don't, I don't know like why. It's like such a good. It's like it's such a. It's like a blank slate, like a blank like canvas. It's a canvas yeah. for you to like throw whatever money to to like yeah. uh, create what you want, the environment that you want, and that's why. Yeah.
don't mind that you know Good one. <laughs> but all right. Solid. Sexually? I'm kidding. <laughs> Milo. Sorry, guys. My Milo's uncomfortable with this too. I am. Don't worry. So am I. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> it's a nail gun, bro. And your carpet's not even like protected. You don't even have your drapes over. What the fuck, dude? Yeah. <laughs> That's a little awkward. Yeah, super awkward. She looks so uncomfortable. I mean, I would too. Like you, and he's just like letting a... it happen. What were you gonna say? Um. It's one of the things where it's like he wants her to show, he wants to show her that, like, yeah, I can have anybody I want. Yeah, it's like a power grab thing. Mm hmm. You know what's even more fucked up? They have a whole dinner planned after this. Yeah, I know. Or. So she thinks. You have every opportunity right now. Get the fuck out. Yeah. You you literally don't know how much of a bullet you you're dumb dying. broad. That's really the first, like, I don't know. It, it, it's like the first human moment he's had, you know? I don't think so. What do you mean? Do you think that was a genuine human moment, or was that just him? I think like, that was just him think... being, I think his initial plans to, like, do whatever it is he wanted to do failed. So he had to do another, he had to do another, uh, he, he has to do another attempt or something like that. Ah. Uh, yeah. Like, I sense no, like, genuine emotion right there. Yeah. Well, there he is, controlling his fucking sweat glands. Man, I'm telling you, that steak looks delicious.
this the goblin knows, dog. I know, right? He's so goblin in it. Well, and even they did a great job with Willem Dafoe, like as an audience member, you're like, does he does he know? Does he not know? Is he just trying to pull teeth and get him to admit it? Like, you know, whatever. I even kind of feel bad for her, though, you know? You feel bad for everybody yeah, that is fair. not wearing a suit. Yeah, pretty much. Good lord. I wonder what exactly she's talking about. I'm I'm kind of afraid to know. It's like please for the love of God, do not take it. I know, right? It's like, bro, come on. No, 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 yeah, no, no, like, no, she no, literally no. Just laid out, she laid out all the signs for like, hey, guess what? I'm a loose end. Yeah, right? Yeah. Like, she basically just let him know, oh, crap. Like she sees him, she sees him drugged. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, okay. Yeah, she doesn't like it. Is this Paul Allen's? Yep. That's funny. Hey. Where do you summer? That's a verb in their in their lives. All right. Yeah. So he's like creating an alibi that he's back here. Yep.
it's like the most like uncomfortable situation like I've seen in like the silver screen in a long time. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because I I feel extra bad for I Christy is really what we know her as, but you know, it, it's sad because like not only is she in this awful situation, I mean, she's having to be a prostitute to make cash and whatever else, but she's also having to deal with all their materialistic bull mm -hmm. because they're rich. You know what I mean? Bad move. It's like he it's like you almost sense that he just wants to be heard or seen. Yeah, that that's interesting too. But I don't see but it's like not really. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's again, it's like part of his his mask that he puts on, you know. Mhm. Mm I mean, it, it it it's mental illness, you know what I mean? It, it's not it's not going to make sense. It, it it's just interesting to think about it you know and to kind of mm. look at it yeah good lord where's uh whitney houston i know whitney houston now You better run, Trick. I know, right? What the fuck did he do to her? Who knows, dude? What did it say? Die, yuppie scum. <laughs> oh my god. It's insane, right? Yep. Good lord, man. Like this is probably where the most it, you feel a sense of like oh yeah what's it called like panic fear. Yeah, yeah panic it's 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 one of the scariest moments of the movie really honestly it might be the scariest moment mm -hmm. as he runs butt ass naked down the hallway with a chainsaw and his sneakers on. Hey, at least he's got the sneakers. The breathing through the mouth is what makes him oh, seem like so yeah. animalistic. Yeah. You got to give credit to the man with his aim. Oh. A real shame, man. Oh my God. But again, then we cut to the drawing, and it's like, okay, did he imagine that, or did that really happen? Like, yeah. it's also hard to believe logistically. Like, I don't know. It's weird. Logistically, how did nobody hear the chainsaw and the screaming and the banging and all that stuff?
Do you know what I you know what I think would be interesting? I think it would be interesting if like can you imagine if like I feel like you can definitely like splice up this movie in certain parts to to make it seem like where he's daydreaming and where he's not. I feel like you can definitely like splice them together into into different into this oh, yeah, yeah. dream and reality and it'd right. be really interesting to see it. It would this would, would almost, definitely be this would be like a reality part. Yes, and it would obviously. almost be a it would almost be a different movie if you took out the parts that you thought were were just in his head, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have assess- assessed the situation and I'm done. <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't seen someone wear a shirt that has that on there. Oh, I'm sure there is. Yeah. I have to return some videotapes. Rip. What was this movie made? 2000? 2000. 2000. Boy, really fucking rip. They had one year left. Oh boy, not the cat. (laughs) See it. What is that like a Glock nineteen? At least the cat lived for once. I mean, yeah. But again, real, fake, is it in his head? Is he, is it a hallucination? Like this part right here? Wouldn't that, yeah, like wouldn't that be interesting if he, if the woman he shot was in a hallucination and he was just running away from nothing? He was just running away from the idea of the, of being followed by the cops, you know? Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. Like what? <laughs> yeah, hundred percent hallucination. Yeah. He said, "Damn, I need to invest in this shit." I know, right? Yo, his GTA star rating right now is like out of four. It just like skyrocketed. Yeah. He said, "Oh shit, where is it?" Well, and that's the other thing. Is he killing all these people? Is he killing these two people like just out of Is he killing them out of fear of nothing? Like it is like even like are the cops not chasing him and he's just killing them because he thinks they are? Ooh, that is he's a good at, question right there. He's at the World Trade Center right now. That's sad. Memory live on forever, my man. I know. Every time I see it in a movie, though, it's like, it's kind of sad. <laughs> it's so fucking dumb. Oh, my God. It's like, it's like you like, oh, no, he's going to shoot that poor man who just I know, like, right? smiled at him and then boom, pin. You also get the sense that he doesn't know what's, I don't think he, he's to the point where he doesn't even know what's real anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, but like, where was the turning point in it? You know what I mean? Like, was it at the ATM? Yeah, I know. Or was it somewhere else? 
he's paranoid. Is he being chased by the cops? It, like, what's happening, you know? I killed some people. Maybe five or ten. So think of it like that. He killed like several people before oh, we yeah, were even he... introduced to him. Yeah, yeah. Do you think he feels remorse here? Remorse that he got caught. <laughs> Fuck. He just twenty and forty and are two very different things. Shit. Can you imagine, like, imagine if this was real and, like, the lawyer just listening to it. And you throw in cannibalism to the mix. Yeah. Good God. He, is, he just seems so psychotic. Christian Bale did such a good job, man. I'm pretty scared. It wouldn't have been the same with Leo DiCaprio or Vince Vaughn or Ewan McGregor. I mean, it wouldn't have been the same with any of them. Yeah. They're all great actors, but I mean, you know. He may show up at Harry's bar. He's. I, I thought you were expecting to like get arrested tonight. He said, whew, that's a relief off my shoulders. Let's go kill again. <laughs> yeah, right. I've killed 20, I don't know, maybe 40. <laughs> this last particular scene is what really fucking gets me. I'm not going to lie. Like these last couple of minutes. There he goes back to his vigorous body routine. Wait, is he at Paul Allen's apartment? Um, no. Yes, he is. Now he is. I mean, he wo he was at his apartment. Now I think he's at Paul Allen's apartment. Possibly. No, he most definitely is. And this is where it gets pretty fucking wacky in my eyes. Well, it gets wacky because again, this is the point where he starts to realize that he it, it, he can't discern what's reality and not, you know? Mm -hmm. Like all of that scene, the the dead hookers and hanging in the closet and the chainsaw and the lady dead on the bathroom floor, like all of it, it's just he he doesn't know the difference anymore. He doesn't know what's real and what's not. Mhm. Mm
again, is she real? Yes. Is any of this really happening? What do I do with my hands? I don't know what, <laughs> you know. Good lord. That is an overdose. <laughs> he said, let me Are take that. Are you chewing bottle. it too? Said, Jesus, fuck. <laughs> he said, let me take the whole bottle here. It's like he was low key, he was a He's insane. It's been like a slow increase throughout the movie. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's built and built and built. And now it's just to the point where it's like, holy crap, he is he's he's just kind of losing it at this point. Like he's just losing it. He also just took that whole friggin' bottle of pills, so he's probably unbelievably high. Mm -hmm. And possibly overdosing, but it's fine. <laughs> He looks like a newborn baby deer. I know, right? And he's got to go meet the detective and all of these guys for drinks. Still trying to hold on. I know, right? Well, that was pretty wrong. I know, right? Wait, he said Bateman?
He's such a good actor, man. <laughs> so his name is Davis. Yeah. Yeah. That's what really gets me. And honestly, like, how long do you think, like, in real life was this happening? Like was this like in the span of like a couple of a I, week I don't know. or like I mean, a day or like two or three days? Like who knows? I don't know. And you know, even all of these drawings, this is like like are these drawings like these drawings may be as realistic as it was, but in his mind, he was really doing all of this stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. But he also may have actually killed homeless people and he may have actually done that. I mean, it's just it, it's like you just don't know. And I know uh, Mr. Ellis, the guy who wrote the novel, was like, you know, oh, I don't know if it's going to translate well. But at the same time, though, it's like it almost makes it better if you don't know, because it makes you think it's a think piece. It's like, holy crap. Did he kill? Any did he kill anybody? Did he kill some of them? Did he kill nobody? It's interesting. <laughs> I'm not particularly hungry, but I'd like to have a reservation somewhere. Like, what? I know, right? Davis, but they call him Bateman. Do you think it's split personality? Yes. Or schizophrenia or something, you know. You know that the door behind him says this is not an exit. And I believe the final line of the book is this is not an exit. I believe. So who was doing the killing? Uh, Davis or Pat or Patrick Bateman? I, I don't know. I mean, it. That's a great question. Uh, I mean, I, I, I guess I, I guess it depends on your take. Do you think, you know, do you think that he is really another person, and Patrick Bateman is his, you know, is his alternate personality, or do we think? that you know he really is patrick bateman because again the lawyer sat there and called him Kleins or whatever the hell his name was his lawyer sat there and called him davis but then everybody went straight back to calling him patrick bateman so it's just like it's just kind of uh, i think it's just kind of your take and what you know what you uh 
kind of what you're I, I don't know. It, it's kind of it's up to the imagination, I think. I think it leaves a lot up to the imagination. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I totally get that. And so. one thing that I like, I just this would definitely be something like like you said, this is a think piece. And this really delves into like either schizophrenia or uh, split personalities, which is something that was so unheard of, I guess, back then, like even in the 2000s, like mental illness and mental health was just not like a, a common thing. Like if you yeah, people nobody... that had people that had uh, dementia or Alzheimer's were sent to the fucking loony bin, like only yeah, nobody... only like a decade ago, like it wasn't. It wasn't necessarily something that's uh, very well known in, in regards to, like, mental health. So, like, I don't know. This was, like, such, like, I'm pretty sure when this movie came out, it was just so, like, taboo and, like, unorthodox. It was almost, like, where do you go with this? People were easy to just chalk it up to, like, oh, well, he definitely did kill all these people. And maybe his pe- his friends, like, covered it up one night and just acting like nothing happened or something like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and it goes back to what Brett Ellis said, you know, with the idea that he's so crazy. It's like, how do you, where do you begin to figure out as an audience member, what the hell is real or not? I mean, you can go through what Willem Dafoe is kind of talking and you can kind of go see the investigation as his eye, like through his eyes and get little things about that. But it's just, it's interesting. Like, you know, well, again, we'll, we'll, we'll take a deeper dive into some of the, the reviews and the, the, the thoughts on that, but as we wrap up our commentary here, um, the LA Times, actually, I, I pulled a quote from their review of American Psycho from 2000, and it says, The difficult truth is that the more viewers can model themselves after protagonist basement, Bateman, the more they can distance themselves from the human reality of the slick violence that fills the screen and takes it all as some kind of cool joke, the more uh, the more they are likely to enjoy this stillborn, pointless piece of work. So, obviously, they weren't big on the movie, but the idea of, like, detaching yourself from reality uh is is really interesting to me and i think that's kind of the overall takeaway from here is that patrick bateman is so detached from his own reality it's almost like what what part of that was real was he you know obviously it, it the the film kind of paints it as this whole time when he's got the hookers and he's trying to, you know, he's going to Paul Allen's apartment and he's trying, he's packing his clothes. And I mean, it, it paints the picture like he's trying to cover up the murder, but by the time you realize the murder didn't really happen, it's like, okay, is Paul Allen one of his, you know, it, it, it does he embody like people that he's around? You know what I mean? Because the, when he's talking to the lawyer at the end, the lawyer is like, you're not your Davis. He was like, you don't like, you You know, he's like, he, it, it, he almost made it like the phone call, the confession phone call when he's sweating in his office and he calls the lawyer, you know, Patrick Bateman is a person, but the lawyer implies that he is not Patrick Bateman. And yeah, he embodies because Patrick... Paul Allen. He embodies Marcus, whatever the dude's name is. He embodies Patrick Bateman, if that's true. So that it's just, it's interesting. It's kind of, again, it's a think piece. It's up to your own imagination and, you know, kind of your take on it and what you think. I mean, there's nothing left I can say after all that, dude. Like, it's, <laughs> it's a yeah. fucking, it's a fucking mind bender, I would say. This is, like, golly. Like, this is one of the movies where, like, it de- like you, de- when you think of American Psycho, you don't necessarily think of something that's, like, mind bending as that, as, as what the movie actually presents. When you actually sit down and get past all, like, the terrible, like, fucking grimy shit that they talk about and, like, objectifying women and all these, like, um pseudo one percent or lifestyles or whatnot like it's once you get past all of that like bro like this thing is such a case study and such an interesting Mm -hmm. uh movie to actually watch that can literally just make you question your own reality and who you are as a person yeah yeah it's it's fun to dissect and we're going to dissect it more in episode 14 of purely and simply evil which we are going to do on tuesday night uh i will post the link to the playlist of purely and simply and evil or purely and purely and simply purely and simply evil uh so that you can go back and catch up on all the episodes prior to this one but this is going to be a fun one to kind of dive into and 
and talk about. So uh, thank you guys for joining us. This has been our commentary of the extended cut of American Psycho from 2000, starring Christian Bale. Guys, new episodes of Let's Talk Movies and Purely and Simply Evil premiere every single Tuesday and Saturday at 8 p.m. and 10 a.m. Eastern. We are on Twitter and Instagram at We Talk the Movies. We absolutely love Huey Lewis in the news and Phil Collins and, and Whitney Houston. And uh, we will talk to you soon. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.